ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS is spontaneous and fatal and involves degeneration of the nervous system, specifically in the motor system. Currently, ALS affects about 3,000 Canadians, and unfortunately, about 2 to 3 people die every day from ALS just in Canada alone. This adds up to about 913 deaths per year. ALS has no definitive biomarker or test for diagnosis yet. In 2014, a widespread trend known as the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge emerged and became viral on social media with intentions to raise awareness and funds for ALS. So, did the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge have a powerful impact? And how much money did it raise? We asked students at McMaster what they thought. Did you hear about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? I did. And did you participate? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. No? Yeah. I did, yes. I did not. And why did you participate? Uh, a friend nominated me from back home, so I had to do it. Um, well, everyone else was doing it. Um, I like donated, but I didn't want to throw ice on myself, so, <laughs> so I, I figured like donating is like the same thing. Uh, well, there's a trend going around and uh, to help bring awareness to ALS. And what kind of impact do you think that had? I think it helped bring more awareness uh, to ALS just by a little bit. Um, and I nominated three other people and then that uh, spread to even more people from there. So I think it really got the word out. Did you know that that challenge actually fundraised about $10 million in Canada alone? No, I didn't. That's a lot of money. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. That's impressive for sure. How much money do you think that it raised? Uh, 500k? Actually, it raised $10 million. $10 million? Actually, the Government of Canada generously matched the $10 million ALS Ice Bucket Challenge donations, which totaled to $20 million towards ALS research in Canada alone. So, how does the Canadian government contribute to ALS research? Generally, there are two types of trials when it comes to ALS research. The first kind of trial is the therapeutic clinical trial. This trial tests whether prospective drugs will be effective in reducing the pain or symptoms of ALS, or slow down the progression of ALS in the human body. On the other hand, observational trials are quite different. These trials are focused on understanding information about ALS itself, such as biomarkers in the body, symptoms, genetics, and the pathophysiology. Ultimately, these trials are very important because they help scientists and doctors diagnose and treat ALS. Traditionally, the ALS Society of Canada raises about $1.5 to $2 million a year that go directly towards ALS research. One of the things that ALS Canada does is that it funds peer-reviewed research grants and fosters collaboration amongst Canadian researchers. The Canadian government has played a critical role in ALS research as researchers independently received funding through government-supported programs like NSERC, also known as Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council or Brain Canada. In 2014, the landscape of ALS research changed as Canadian citizens took an active initiative to advance Canadian ALS research. Through many generous donations, the Ice Bucket Challenge raised a whopping $10 million for the ALS Society of Canada. In response, the Canadian government decided to match the generosity of the public by investing $10 million of their own into the research. This sudden surge of investment invoked a powerful shift in the field of ALS research. From 2015 to 2017, ALS Canada and Brain Canada used the fundraised money to provide unprecedented amounts of loans targeted towards the ALS initiative. ALS Canada and the Government of Canada colluded to invest a total of $24 million into 44 unique and innovative ALS research ideas from 2015 to 2017. In 2015, 29 grants worth $13.9 million were given. This was followed in 2016 with 23 grants worth $6.7 million that were allocated. And finally, in 2017, 12 grants worth $3 million were invested. The ALS Society mentioned that there has been more advancement in the last five to seven years than over the last century. These exciting investments by the Canadian public and government prove to be monumental as they take us one step closer towards making ALS treatable by 2024. 
Currently, research is heading toward therapy improvement, working on clinical trials, and discovering triggers of this neurodegenerative disorder. ALS is known as a bankruptcy disease, from its huge financial task to patients and their caretakers. As ALS progresses, it becomes more expensive, with an average cost of $150,000 to $250,000. Also, caretakers end up taking a lot of time off to support the patient. Prior to 2013, Canadians received up to 6 weeks and $3,144 from Compassionate Care Benefits. In 2013, ALS groups across Canada attended more than 100 meetings lobbying for Compassionate Care Benefit reform. Then, the Canadian government extended the Compassionate Care Benefit in January 3rd of 2016. Today, caretakers can claim up to $13,624 in benefits for 26 weeks. They can also expand to a year in benefits and can share amongst family members. Though the progress made thus far in research for ALS has been extraordinary, there's always room to do more. In terms of research, the advancements made in human disease biomonitoring and computer science can be used towards investing in more relevant and effective research methods. This can be applicable for studying the disease pathway and human-based studies. In turn, this would help with increasing the efficacy, validity, and our understanding of the human body disease progression and drug functions.